I'll just say hello while these people are rummaging around in the cupboard to get my sound working. Apparently the video camera can hear me, but the speakers in the room cannot. So they're working on that. Um, hi, good morning. Welcome to the PhD Dev Room. I thought it'd be fun to speak in a room that I'm organizing, so I'm gonna do that thing where I introduce myself in a minute. Um, if you are sat on the ends of the rows, it's fine to say where you are, but if we get more people coming in, please move in, because I don't expect everybody who wants to see a 9 a.m. talk will be here at 9 a.m. So it gets a bit busier while I'm talking. Please just make room, make room, um, as other people show up um, and move in off the ends. Please turn off your phones. Uh, we're here all day with a really, really good lineup. I will be here all day because I chose these speakers. I think they're all awesome. Uh, so I hope that you'll join us and talk to us and uh, yeah, just be part of the experience. If you're tweeting, we have a hashtag, please tweet with PHP Fostem so that even if I'm not already following you on Twitter, we can kind of share the excitement with the day. We have a Twitter account as well, so if we've got any announcements or we want to tell you how excited we are, we'll be using that. We use Joined In for feedback. It's an open source project which allows, I don't want to be completely in the dark. It's fine, I'll do it, I'll do it, thanks. Um, it's an open source project which allows the people who see talks to tell speakers what is working and potentially what is not working. So please, please do take the time to visit Joined In and give some feedback. I will now attempt to fix what they just did to my lighting. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool, good morning. I've now taken my watch off because it's attached to a Bluetooth device which I now have no access to. So what time is it? Fine, perfect. The first talk in the dev room today is Lorna. She's going to talk about New Wave PHP. Hi, I'm Lorna. I'm going to talk about New Wave PHP. Um, and I want to start by talking about how PHP looks, what the story is with the recent versions, and where we are with this. Maybe not all of you use PHP all the time. So <coughs> PHP 5.2 was released in 2006. We have a surprising number of people still running on a, on a 5.2 platform. If you like your technology a la 2006, then you can carry on. Good things have happened since, and if you look at these release dates, you can see that the release frequency of PHP has increased enormously in the last few years. This is to do with the changes that have been made in the language and its release process itself. It also means that the pain involved in going from one version to the next version is much released, is much reduced, because there's not quite so much time to put in big changes. Notice at the bottom of this list, currently, current stable are 5.5 and 5.6. Seven will be out in 2015. This is a big release. We're not releasing six. The best scripting languages never release a version six. <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're joining on that, on that uh, bandwagon. So our time scales look something like this with 5.2, 5.3. Things get much closer together, and we now have seven scheduled um, as being relatively soon. PHP has a problem. Uh, obviously, it's got more than one problem, but <coughs> there's one particular problem that I would like to talk about today. PHP has a problem, and that is its adoption rates. This is what current usage of PHP looks like. The current stable versions of PHP are these two lines here. Oh, you can't see the purple one. There's a purple one here. These are the current versions of PHP. These are the dead end of life versions as a percentage. These are relatively new figures, just a couple of weeks old. Good news, less than 50% of our install base uses PHP 5.3, which is end of life. And a mere further 22% uses 5.2, which is very end of life. We've got a few people on 5.4. Um, this is the orange one that's kind of going in the right direction. 5.4's got about seven months left on its support. It is security fixes only at this point. There will be no more releases unless we find any a security bug. So yeah, we have an adoption problem. Cool things have happened in these new versions that maybe you didn't realize you should upgrade. Maybe you didn't know it was out there. So I wanted to just kind of update everybody on what has been cool and useful in PHP, but also what might be hard for you to upgrade. I can stand here and say, everybody should be using the latest and greatest. And you know that you've got an application that perhaps you've inherited, 
it's been around a while, it uses some libraries, it works. And you may not necessarily want to upset it. So I want to just flag <laughs> some of the things that might happen when you upgrade your existing applications. OK, so the first thing to look out for is Register Globals has gone. Bad news, your PHP, 5 point, your PHP 3 code probably won't work on PHP 5.4 and later. If it's still running now, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> if you do have code which is using Register Globals and you need to adapt it, um, then you need to look for totally undeclared variables in your global namespace and figure out where they came from, whether it's get or post, and then import them and filter them correctly to initialize your variables so that your code will still work. We had some new stuff introduced in 5.4 as well. So the, we have an echo, the short echo syntax became standard. Older versions of PHP have this short open tag. Um, so you could use just pointy bracket question mark, which is kind of unfriendly to other languages. Looks a bit like XML, confuses parsers. And so we have removed that. You can no longer, from 5.4, turn on the short open tag syntax. It, it, it is not enableable. If you have short tags, you need to do a global find and replace and make them into long tags, replacing uh, pointy bracket question mark with pointy bracket question mark PHP. Also with the short open tag in old versions of PHP, it was possible, you've got this extra syntax, which is the equivalent to just echoing a variable. This is always valid. You don't need to turn on short syntax. This is always valid. So you don't need to enable the short open tags to get this in PHP. All it does is replace the question mark, point bracket question mark equals with an opening PHP tag and the word echo. So you'll normally just see this and then a variable name, and it's open a PHP tag, echo the variable name, and then you, you will close the PHP tag again, commonly used in templates. What else is new? From 5.4 and all the versions after it, the eall reporting flag actually includes all errors. <laughs> I know it's radical, it's crazy. <laughs> They're really pushing the boat out. eall actually now does mean everything. And what that means is it also includes a strict. So when you upgrade a pre-PHP 5.4 project to a newer platform, it will normally get much noisier in your logs. Um, if, it's, if you have no intention of investing any more time or fixes in this project, maybe no one's going to pay you to do that, then feel free to turn off eStrict. Have a read of the logs first because there's some very good warnings in there, but feel free that you might want to disable eStrict. If you wonder why you have upgraded and now your logs are full, we t <laughs> we've turned on a whole extra reporting level. And, and, and so sometimes it can look like you've got a lot of problems uh, and you haven't, it's just that we've got a lot of output. So either fix it, because the e strict warnings are useful, or don't. That's fine, you can turn it off, so that you can still see the actual errors in your log, not just lots of noise. Another error that we often get on upgrades is about time zones, uh, and this is frustrating because upgrading to 5.3 gave you a warning about time zones, and upgrading to 5.4 gives you a different warning about time zones. So if you have fixed your time zone config settings on upgrade, you're probably going to have to do that again. Um, and this is purely because time zones of offset make no sense. A time occurs in a place. So if you are setting up an event that's in Brussels for May, the offset in Brussels today is different from what the time zone offset in Brussels will be in May. So PHP requires you to say where you are in a continent place format time zone. Stick it in php.ini, everything will be fine. But it does stick out, it does put out quite a chunky error on every script. So that can be off-putting when you upgrade as well. We you'll also see this error. Nearly every code base I upgrade. Um, I work for a company that does project rescue and migration. I see, <laughs> I see a lot of code bases in need of upgrade. Um, I often see this one, call time pass by reference. And often this one actually isn't a problem. 
The error relates to, you should declare a function either to take a reference or to take a value because the function will either update the thing or return a new value. Those are the options. Your function should know which of those things is going to happen because uh, unexpectedly getting a, a reference or thinking you're getting a reference and then not returning the value makes no sense, right? In earlier versions of PHP, it was valid to just pass by reference whenever you liked. In recent, but earlier than 5.4, I think, versions of PHP, you could put, so you declare a reference by putting an ampersand in front of the variable. You could declare that in at call time as well as long as the function had it in. So as long as the function was declared with the ampersand, it would always be passed by reference. This error occurs on upgrade because it is no longer valid to also have the ampersand in the call. So you cannot have an ampersand when you call a function. Even though you are passing it by reference and the function is declared co correctly, you'll find that you need to go around taking ampersands out of code. I hate this one, but it just is what it is. So where your function looks like this, you have a function, it's declared, it takes a reference. When you call it, you cannot pass the ampersand in the call. You cannot have this here. I think it's more readable, but it's no longer valid syntax, and it causes this pass by reference error. Okay, I'm running through lots and lots of features here, so if you have any questions, feel free to just interrupt. PHP 5.5 came with traits. For many years, PHP has been, I want to say famous, I might mean infamous, for not really having an object model. Um, we had this toy, functions and array, arrays glued together <laughs> once, way back in the past. Newer versions of PHP have a pretty solid object model, actually. We have a lot of features that are coming in from other serious OO languages. One of the things that came in in 5.5 was traits. And it was much hyped at the time, but now it's, you know, 5.5's been out for quite a while. We're starting to see things really kind of bed in and be useful. So you may waste well see this when you're working with modern libraries. And it's a really good reason to upgrade. It's something that's motivated me on a couple of projects to get use of traits. So a trait is kind of a, a, a fragment of a class in a way. The idea is to give us reusable elements uh, that can be included in our various classes. It avoids what I call the false parent pattern, where perhaps everything in your system needs to have the ability to log itself or some kind of audit trail or some other piece of functionality that you want present in all of your classes. So you make a parent class that has that and then you create your actual entity classes which inherit from this parent. They're not related at all, but you want this shared functionality, you want to keep it in one place. Traits gets around that, so you can declare a trait which has some properties, some methods, maybe it builds on another trait, whatever, and then you can apply it to your classes, whichever class is needed. So you can selectively apply that piece of fragment of class to any of your classes that need it. So it sort of surpasses the inheritance uh, and plays more to the composition side of putting applications together. I have a very trivial example for you. Um, and this is <laughs> a madly edited with bad white space in an effort to get it on the slide. A trait from a, the monologue project. So monologue is a super duper amazing just plug it in, logging library that we use in, in most modern PHP frameworks. So you can just use monologue logger to bring it into namespace and then here's the trait. Any of your classes which use this trait then get this log function. So you can just be like, you log this, you log this. You don't have to redeclare that and you don't need to follow the, the false parent pattern to give the log functionality to all of your object classes. So this is, a, this is a really nice new feature that's come in and you just use it, use the trait inside your class and that compiler assisted copy paste takes the trait and puts it here. And then your class is exactly as, as if you had copied and pasted it in. That's a really, really nice new feature. 
also in 5.5, a feature you never knew you needed, the date time immutable class was introduced. Now, PHP has had a date time class since 5.2, and it was finished and useful in 5.3, I think that's fair to say. Um, it was always a good idea, uh, <laughs> but we didn't quite have all the functionality around it that we needed. From 5.3, date time has been the way to do dates in PHP. I don't think I've called the date function since. Because date time supports the same format arguments, I use the date manual page a lot to look up, is it JSF, what am I doing? But I don't use the date function. We've got date time. However, 5.5 brings date time immutable, which means that when you try and do date calculations, when you do it with date time, it changes the object that you're operating on, so you can't do, you know, you're, you're, do, you're doing, ordering it now and your package is valid for 30 days, when will it expire? If you try and do that calculation, it updates the original object. So date time immutable instead will return values. I have an example. So we instantiate a new date time object, which defaults to now. And if you inspect it, you can see it. And if you then add four days to it and inspect it again, then you can see that the value itself is updated. Date time immutable, in contrast, doesn't update. So it shows the same date both times. Instead, you need to capture the return value of this. It does, it's immutable. So it, the same function signatures are available, but it returns the value you're looking for. So I find that code that I've struggled with in the past now makes complete sense. But you need to know that what you want is actually date time immutable, especially for the date time calculations. We have really good support. It's very easy to be like plus three months, 90 days from now, 90 days from then. That all works nicely, but the date time immutable means that you don't lose the value that you started with in your code quite as much. Password hashing. Has anyone ever built a PHP website which allowed users to log in? That's all the conscious people in the room have just raised their hand. I don't really know how we got to PHP 5.5 without this feature. However, even if you're not on 5.5, there's a back port. So I don't care what version of PHP you're on. I, actually, I do, because I think you need 5.3.10 to get working bcrypt. But anyway, um, <coughs> I don't care what version of PHP you're on. You should be doing password hashing like this. So this is in core from 5.5. Prior to 5.5, there's an include for you to use. It's in a GitHub project. It's written in user land. So my index.php on old projects starts with hash, hash. Remove this line when you upgrade to PHP 5.5. So then you upgrade to PHP 5.5, and your code says, can't redeclare function. And you go, oh, yeah, and take out the include. So here's the password. User is registering. They supply us a new password. We hash the password using the cunningly named password hash function. Give the password, give the algorithm that you want to use. Now you can be specific about this algorithm, but here you can see that I've just passed a constant password default. This is PHP's promise to you. If you use password default, PHP will always hash the password using the current recommended scheme. So when PHP gets better recommended password schemes, this password default constant will update for you. There are other values available, but you want this one. If you echo that, you get something that looks like this. Top tip, you may need to make your database password storage columns a little bit wider. Because an MD5 is only, you know, and this is, can't remember how long this one is, uh, but longer. Guess how I found that out? OK, so <laughs> you get something that looks like this, and this stores a bunch of different things. Inside this output is which algorithm was used, which salt was used, and it is itself a hash. The joy of that is you can't just do a rainbow table lookup because you've got to take this apart and figure out what algorithm you should be using, what salt you should be using, and then do it separately for every possible password in the database. So the return on investment for trying to brute force password databases is now tiny. We However, we've now stored something that looks like this in the database, and we've got to get passwords back. So user comes back, tries to log in. 
This will change your pattern a little bit because when you're using a really simple hash, you can just say, select star from users where username equals this and password equals hash password. And then if you get any rows back, they were fine. In this, you need to fetch the user's record and then pass your stored value and the value they just submitted through the form into the password verify function, which takes what they just gave you and what you had stored and will come back and say yes or no. So it's very straightforward. Password hash, create it. Password verify, pass the hash and what they just said was their password and see if you can make the two go together. All good, go away. Here's the uh, workaround for you. If you're not on 5.5 yet, you can still go home and improve your password storage today, tomorrow, maybe, Monday. Um, it's here. So it's, it's IRC Maxell is Anthony Ferreira. He is a really awesome contributor and good guy. He built this for core and then backported it so that we could use it in our older projects. So just go get his library, include it at the top of index.php, and when you upgrade to PHP 5.5, you can just drop it, because that same functionality is exactly available in core. <sighs> Everyone okay? Any questions? Yeah. What is the default hash nowadays? I believe it's password bcrypt. Okay, any other questions? No, this is good, this is fine. There's an amazing number of people here, and you, you all look fairly alert. So I'm, I'm so far, I'm blown away. All right, generators. This came in in 5.5. Now, generators exist in other languages. Uh, Python has it, for example, which is where I had seen it before it came into PHP. And a generator is kind of smarter than an iterator, uh, a bit more usable. At least my brain can handle them much more easily than iterators. And all it does is it's a function with multiple return opportunities. So you see that I have this yield keyword in my code, where you might think the return statement might go. And the way this works is you call the function, it, the function runs, you hit the yield statement, it returns that value. You call the function again, it literally picks up where it looks off, left off, runs a bit more, returns the next value. You commonly see loops inside generators, it is, good for things like stream handling, where you don't want to read the whole thing into memory and then process it, or you don't want to generate a huge list of numbers and then gen work through that data set. The, the generator allows you to work out calculating the next value or bringing in the next slurp from s the stream and then passing it off to something which will process it and then ask for the next piece. Um, I have a really trivial example, but I think it's worth seeing so that you will recognize it. So I have a function. It has yield statements in it. The problem with trying to get code on slides is it's so trivial that you would never do it this way, but never mind. There are multiple yield statements. You get the idea. To use this, you assign what looks like a function call to a variable. And you would just think, oh, maybe it returns an array. And then you iterate over the array. But if you var dump this, you see that it's a generator, and it doesn't return a whole array of stuff. It just kind of, I have a handle on the generator, and each time that we for each it, and the iterator advances, we make another call back to that generator and get the next set of return values. So it's a very, very nice way, particularly of processing large data sets without just hammering all the memory on your box. Uh, at the same time, uh, another feature came in called coroutines, and they play quite nicely together, that you can kind of insert values from one and then generate the, the next value for that. Okay, what else do you need to know? MySQL is deprecated. Uh, again, this is more for projects where you've got a project, it works perfectly well, everything's cool. PHP, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to say this politely. PHP quite often has more than one way to achieve something. That's quite diplomatic, isn't it? Right? <laughs> we have three MySQL libraries, oh dear God. Um, so we have MySQL, we have MySQL I, we have MySQL ND, oh, we have PDO as well. The bottom line is, no one cares about the old MySQL library. No one's supporting it. It's missing loads of features that are actually quite cool. So we're just, we're just admitting that no one's maintaining it, and we're de we've deprecated the MySQL extension. So you go through your MySQL connect function calls, should now be MySQL I function calls. If your client will pay you to update this, this uh, application, or if it's something you use for your own business, like your organization relies on it, 
you probably want to switch over to PDO. Um, but if not, try my, my, then it's not quite API compatible, but look for the MySQI equivalents in order to update your application. We, we haven't stopped using MySQL from PHP, I promise. <laughs> but the straight MySQL extension has gone away, and that's burned a few people on upgrade. With a built-in opcache, if you've used PHP in production, you will know, well, way back when, you will know that you install PHP, then you install APC, which is our opcode cache. We had some issues with APC, and now from PHP 5.5, we have an op cache built in. So it comes as part of it, you will no longer install APC. It is available from Peckle, um, but I would say from 5.4, you want the op cache peckle extension, not the APC peckle extension. From 5.5, op cache is bundled. That's the good news. The bad news is it's turned off by default. <laughs> so <laughs> when you upgrade, just go and find these settings and turn them on. Yes, I would like, would you like your code to go faster? Yes, please. So <laughs> turn this on, and then you've got op cache out of the box. Don't go looking for APC for 5.5, doesn't exist. Yes. Why is it disabled by default? Good question, I've been asking that for a while. The way that it was explained to me was, we, APC and PHP have always been out of step in their releases, so we release PHP, APC has always lagged a little bit um, because it's, it's separately maintained. 5.4 had a huge number of performance improvements, and I've got some performance graphs for you um, later on in the slide deck, and we struggled with a few edge cases. And so it was like, okay, so everyone should use Opcache, Zend open sourced their cache uh, as an extension, so that became available. Then we decided to package it for 5.5 and ship it. But it wasn't widely used an extension before that, so it wasn't super hardened code, and we decided it would not be cool to turn it on for the massive number of PHP installations. So it's not on by default in 5.5. I kind of thought the distros would turn it on by default in their uh, recommended PHP.ini distribution files, that hasn't happened as far as I know. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is my, <laughs> I don't make the decisions, I just give advice. My advice is you probably want to turn this on. Yeah, why is it like that? It's PHP. Okay, <laughs> 5.6, two super cool things in 5.6. Every new version of PHP they release often, there's security fixes, there's small upgrades, things happen in extensions that I don't even use. 5.6 has got this feature, and I'm really looking forward to it. Variadic functions. So, once upon a time, a long time ago, okay, PHP 5.5, we used to use something called func get args, where you could have a variable number of arguments to a function, but you didn't need to declare them. You could just pass anything you liked into the function, and func get args would give you an array of what was passed in. So it was like a, a, a clunky way of doing uh, method overloading. 5.6 has, for example, in, in this function, I've got concatenate. The first argument is transform, and everything else just goes into an array called strings. So you, dec you can declare a few arguments, and then you can be like, and everything else, put it in an array. So it lets you take a trailing variable number of arguments in, into your PHP function. And here all I've done is iterate over them, iterate over the array, make them into a string, and then put the transform operation on them. To call it, you just pass as many arguments as you want to. That's quite cool, variadic functions. It's got a sister, and it, this is the first time in a long time that I've de described PHP as wild. We have argument unpacking. So we now have this uh, splat or scatter operator, which is the three dots. Some of you may be familiar with the mail function. You have the mail function and you pass in the to who you're sending the mail to, the subject of the mail, the body of the mail, and you pass all these various arguments in. Instead of doing this, you can't see this, that's a zero, <laughs> that's a one, <coughs> and that's a two. Instead of having to spell out each, extract each value from your array, you can just say dot, 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 the stuff that's in email. It has to be an enumerated array with the right numbered indexes, so things need to be in order in the array. But you can kind of build up the, the correct arguments for an array, the various things you want to pass into a method, and just pass the lot. 
and this scatter operator will unpack it for you and pass it in. This is an existing core function. This isn't a special function, this is a function that takes arguments. But 5.6 is gonna let you just bang, throw an array at it and let it deal with it itself. This is nice, this is a really nice shortcut. I like this. Um, I am looking for reasons to upgrade a couple of pet projects to 5.6 so that I can get use of this. I think this is a really, really nice um, example. You don't have to have everything in the array, so you can still pass a couple of specific arguments. So here I've passed the two, and then unpack the rest. So it might be do this, do this, and the rest of the fields are in this array. Very, very nice feature. Um, oh, we have namespace functions. Functions have been a bit of a second-class citizen, which is ironic because such a, it's such a seriously script kiddie language. We, we have namespaces, and isn't everything wonderful? We don't really, we've never really been able to name, we've been able to namespace functions, but then you need to refer to them by their full Sunday name to get to them. From 5.6, it's been possible to use the use, but we need use function to be specific. Use the use to namespace the function and then just call it by its short name. So if you have a namespace function that you're having to address by its long name all the time, we've now got that shorthand available. Um, so that's lovely, lots of nice shiny things that some excited person has told you about very early in the morning. But how does this apply to your real life? I don't know about you, I work in the real world, <laughs> I work for an agency that makes PHP websites. Worse than that, we rescue other people's PHP websites. We advertise, has your developer gone snowboarding and not come back? We'll help you. You should see what comes in through the door. Um, <laughs> so what, what do we do in the real world? How can you start to use some of these features? How can you avoid having the stuff that you have that you made that is awesome keep up with the newer features? The first thing to do when you're thinking about upgrading or you're hoping someone will pay you to upgrade is to think about the performance comparison. This graph is somewhat ruined by me having put 5.2 in as well. We have a sizable number of people still running on 5.2, so I think it's worth pointing it out. The whole five series would need a much bigger graph um, to display the performance on it. So this graph is of the time it takes, on average, to run the bench.php script from inside the PHP source code um, on a very average laptop. That very average laptop. Um, so it's not an absolute benchmark, but it shows you relative to the various versions what kind of improvements we can get. So on 5.2, I'm running at just under four seconds. You probably can't see these labels, but I will put my slides online. 5.3 runs at about two and a half. And 5.4 onwards runs at two something, around the two second mark. The performance improvement is significant. What is harder to show you on a graph is memory usage. Anecdotally, depends on your application, of course, 20 to 30% memory usage reduction. How much do you like paying for your hardware? This is significant. If one of your proprietary tools came and said, hey, you should upgrade, we've got this and this and this, you'd bite the hands off. PHP's free. For some reason, that makes it harder to get awesome things implemented. I'm not really sure. So this is the performance speed up. The big wins are between 5.3 and 5.4, particularly in loading of objects. So if you are using, for example, a full stack framework, your improvements will be more than this. You will see a significant speed up because it was all focused around object creation. I know that you are all now completely sold, right? <laughs> so here's how you actually would do this as opposed to just getting the rhetoric. Turn on e-deprecated. E-deprecated is an error reporting level that was introduced in 5.3. Bad news, if you are still on 5.2, you have a mountain to climb. 5.3 should have been a major version release and wasn't. Uh, don't ask me why. No more why questions. I don't make the decisions. 5.2 to 5.3 is a big step and I'm sorry. We know it's a problem. We know the upgrade path is a problem. 5.3 has all of those problems solved and was released in 2009, please come to the future, we have good things. 
Turn on the deprecated level. This will cause things, this will cause entries in your logs for everything you are using in your application, which isn't available in the next version. Nothing got removed at PHP 5.4 that wasn't baked into e-deprecated when 5.3.0 was released. We are not just removing features for fun and without thinking. It's in e-deprecated a whole minor version before it's actually gone. Turn on e-deprecated. This will tell you how big your problems are. Um, there's a PHP code sniffer standard PHP compatibility, which will tell you which parts of your code are not compatible with which future versions of PHP. You can filter for which ones you want to see. It's WIMS. It's amazing. Thank you, WIM. Compile your new PHP. You don't need to upgrade your whole platform. Just compile a new version of PHP, run your test suites, run a lint check. You know, how does this look? Does your is your code syntactically complete? Is it going to work? Different question. <laughs> we can't do tell you that with automated tools, right? <laughs> but you can lint check, so you can know if it's going to blow up. Try running the application with PHP's built-in web server. It didn't ship till 5.4, but hopefully you're upgrading beyond that now. Then upgrade a test platform. If the sky doesn't fall in, then just go for it. My experience is it's unusual to have a PHP 5.2 or 5.3 application, even a kind of gnarly old organically built one, which won't run on 5.5 or 5.6. Sometimes you need to update a few things. We did deprecate some extensions. The e-reg functions are gone. Stuff happens. But I haven't seen any which have been impossible to upgrade. If you call me for migration consultancy, my response will be, go home, run it on PHP 5.5, and if you really do have problems, then you can pay me to look at it. Because it's not worth it. I, I just don't think it's ethical. The upgrade path is not bad at all, especially from 5.3 and later. Uh, I want to say something about the built-in web server. Oh, I'm not sure you can really read that. You run PHP on the command line with dash capital S, server name, colon, port name. Like all of the other built-in application servers that the scripting languages have, you can now request this in your browser. Your current directory will be your web root, and your logs appear on your command line. So you can see errors and stuff like that. I was a cynic when we introduced this. I've used Apache for years. I'm totally happy with it. Everything's awesome. I really don't need a built-in web server. Turns out, I really do. Um, <laughs> I use this a lot. It's fabulous for testing. It's fabulous having a quick look at a project. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. It's fabulous for testing if your upgraded code is going to work. Uh, health warning, the PHP built-in web server is for testing purposes <coughs> only. And the reason it is for testing purposes only is it's single-threaded. <laughs> so <laughs> your request will run and complete, and then it will think about serving the next request. You probably don't want to use it for anything other than things running on your local host. Also, if your PHP crashes out, your web server crashes out. So yeah, just be careful with that. It takes a bunch of switches, so you can make it available on, um, if you can bind it to another domain name, so other people on your network, if they put it in their host file, can reach you. Very useful for seeing the error logs when your manager is testing something. Um, I'm sure there's some more professional ways of saying why this is useful. That's what I use it for. The dash T sets the web route, so if you're running this from, for example, supervisor D, as opposed to just being in the right directory, dash T says where the web route should be. Dash C sets the configuration. I'd recommend that you use the web server with the configuration switch. Um, without it, PHP runs with no php.ini at all. So you get the language defaults, and they're a little bit weird. Recommend that you <laughs> pass in some php.ini um, rather than just letting it fall back to whatever's built into the code. Uh, also, this routing.php file is where you do the equivalent of your Apache rewrites, that kind of stuff. You can put all of that in here. It's like a prepend. It'll do your routing and pretty URLs for you. All right. Um, new projects should be 5.5 or later. 5.4 is basically end of life. Please do not ship onto 5.4, 5.3, 5.2. Can you still buy 5.2 hosting? I bet you can. I hope not. Try to. I think this is really important that the people here, in my opinion, are the people who do understand. There are plenty of PHP users who have no clue what PHP version is, and I kind of like that. I kind of want them to still be able to buy hosting and run PHP code. Like That's what PHP has always been about, the weekend warrior. 
just doing something they believe in, I always want that to be available. But I think the people who do understand need to demand decent hosting. Our hosts lag in version availability because we let them. 5.3 is default on an alarming number of PHP hosting platforms. And it isn't acceptable, but we let it be. So, questions you should ask your host. What versions of PHP are available? If they don't come back and say 5.5 is the default, then don't go with them. It's not that there's no alternatives, right? Are backups included? I don't care if backups are included or not, but they should understand the question and be able to answer it. Which extensions are available and can I add others? There's a horrible trend for PHP hosting which doesn't let you install extensions. That's a fail. There's lots of really good tools, performance tools, um, other improvements. I use a bunch of different extensions for different things and better performance. If I can't install them, why would I host there? Um, can I get support with my PHP setup? It's nice if they say yes. Um, well, I did sit in a, in a meeting with where I'm a supplier, I'm a consultant, I'm a supplier to my client, and the, the hosts were in the meeting, and they, they with the supplier, and the client said, can we get some help with our PHP setup? And the hosting company said, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, we, can, we can absolutely help you with that. We can help you to tune your application. And I thought, well, that's funny, because I drink with you and you're Rails guys. But anyway, it's nice if they can claim that they can help you, that they have some experience in PHP, that they might be interested in discussing your application as opposed to, here is a Linux platform and quite frankly, we're not interested. So it, it, it's kind of, there isn't a right answer here, but you should ask it and judge them on what you get back. Here's a very unofficial list of people I would trust with new PHP projects with reasonably priced uh, VPS or uh, decent level hosting. Server Grove, they are, uh, Pablo runs Server Grove, he's a big contributor to Symfony, he knows his PHP. So host there by all means, they're 5.5 by default right now. Linode, same, current Ubuntu LTS, 5.5 by default. Digital Ocean, very friendly. They've just employed a bunch of PHP community people, so they're very useful to know. Um, I had SiteGround and Rackspace also recommended to me. The providers are out there, please stop buying terrible hosting. I had a client come to me saying, uh, can you help me with my setup? And I helped him, but he had gone with his credit card and bought new, not especially cheap PHP hosting and got 5.3.9 by default. I was gutted for him. Like, that's, oh, come on. All right, rant over. Um, I have no idea how I'm doing for time. Do I have time for questions? Yeah, all right, I'm gonna take a couple of questions, if anyone has any. Oh, this is gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna get away with this, aren't I? Fabulous, okay. So um, if you want to know more about this, I recorded a video for O'Reilly called Intermediate PHP. It's a whole video learning course. They wouldn't let me call it things Lorna thinks you need to know about PHP. That's basically what it should have been. So there's a load of CLI stuff, there's composer stuff, there's an object-oriented primer, there's a bit of SPL in there, there's the web server and the upgrade stuff that you've seen here. So if you are not using PHP all the time or if your PHP got a bit left behind, that might be useful to you. Um, Feel free to get in touch. That's my Twitter account. That's my website. I blog a lot. If you really can't think of a question, then I'm done. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm here all day.